Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Call of Duty League podcast. Major, well, This is Major 5 Qualifiers Week 2, and I'm here with my co-host, as always, CDL Metrics. How are you doing today on our, this is our back to our usual time on, on this uh, beautiful Wednesday night? Yeah, I'm doing well. Um, week 1 of the qualifiers was interesting. Um, I would say, like, the three biggest takeaways were... Optic beat phase again, which last week I said, you know, maybe phase buck the trend. Yeah, that clearly didn't happen. Um, so Optic just have their number. Uh, the battle for the eight seed is still very much in play. Vegas went one and one, as did Minnesota Rocker. So they're still 10 points apart. Um, and then I'd say, like, Toronto impressed and LA Thebes fell short. So I don't, maybe that's four points, but. Either way, I'd say those are the main takeaways. Everybody else, results were pretty much as expected here. Um, and yeah, just looking forward to the week two schedule. Not the best, um, no. especially the early games. But as we get to Sunday, we have some some interesting games to talk about for sure. Yeah, and, and, and as a reminder, we're at this point now in the season where I, I think... I don't think we've said it, or, well, like, not officially. They haven't put a banner up, but, like, some of these teams have been officially eliminated. It's like, you're done, but, like, we're just not going to say that you're done. This is, like, breaking news. The LEG has been eliminated. Well, congrats. I mean, their, their organization doesn't exist the second they play the, the finish the last game. So, I mean, good for them. But, I mean, like, for, for some of these teams, they're done. And they know they're done. Like, I think we're basically looking at, this is a nine-team league right now. Um, LEG, London, and, and Florida are functionally all done. They're not particularly close to defining i'll actually double check I'll, I'll actually just check here to see if they have been eliminated but basically that's what we're looking at this is basically a, a, a nine team league at, at this point um because again uh you have i think florida could definitely still qualify they're 50 but... points behind vegas yes I mean, if they go, so and then they another only 20. played once last week. They're so 70... let's assume they win out and okay. go five and zero, oh, and then win the major. What's that? That's like a hundred CDL points. Let's right? see. Let's like, okay, so let's see how they're trying. Okay, first is sixty five points, and then so they can. So Florida can, if they win the major, they can have a hundred and five CDL points. So they could theoretically get to a hundred and ninety five CDL points, which would place them in sixth. They could theoretically get sixth. And that's, but also like Seattle, Minnesota, Vegas are also going to win games. So is that enough to keep them above the line? Maybe, but yeah, it's still very, very bleak for that team in particular. Yes. But yeah, so. And then LEG add 20 to that. And then London add another 10 to that. So it's, yeah, like even if LEG were to win it all, they would. They would just get it. If they were winning every game. Actually, no. Did LEG play twice last week or not? They played twice. And okay. lost both. Yes. It's not, not looking good. So they would have 30, 90, uh, 165. They w it, so if, if LEG loses again, they are out. Or if Minnesota were to win any other games, they would be also out too. So, yeah, it's not uh, it's not looking good. I think, yeah. and, and and London, I believe, is basically also eliminated. Yeah, London's eliminated too. So, unless that they only play one game, anyway, whatever. There, it's done. It's there's basically nine teams left. Even Florida is a very very remote case. But anyways, so yeah, we're gonna kind of skip through some of these games that don't really exist anymore. And you know what? They're still fun to watch. Um, and you could still put some bets on them. Like for example, um, and, and, and shop between books here. I'll give, I'll give an example here. So the first game, I'm going to immediately go back, go back on what I said was I said, some of these games are horrible. So the first game obviously is LAG versus London, LAG plus one and a half minus two fifty. London minus one and a half plus one eighty-five. LAG minus one Oh five of the money line, London minus one twenty-five. Over four and a half plus one forty five, under four and a half minus one ninety. Again, um, I'll just say quickly. My model has London as a fifty four percent chance, um, which is basically a minus one hundred eight. Their money line is minus one twenty five, so my model just shrugs and says, "Do not touch this." But what you can do is, if you go over here to map one, my model says that map one 
LEG is actually a better hardpoint team. And now on on Bavada, which is or Bodog, which is what we typically use, LEG is plus five and a half points map one. Well, on Bet365, LEG is plus 15 and a half. So, yeah, I mean, both these teams are bad. So just take 15 and a half points, call it a day. And we move on. Yeah. And that's yeah. it. <laughs> I'm kind of in the same boat. This is the battle for last place. Um, so that's very exciting. Um, unfortunate that like tanking doesn't really mean anything in this league. So there's not any spicy like draft pick to get from this. No, but no, no Caleb Williams coming this year. No. no, no, I don't think so. So yeah, I have this as basically a coin flip. Uh, I have London as a 51% favorite. So there's really no value in anything. Um, the minus one and a half for London is somewhat intriguing to me, plus 185. I do have them as the better hard point team overall, a uh, slightly better control team, but I don't know. I'm, I don't have a ton of confidence in that because LAG have yet to play on Expo control and London have yet to win on it after playing it three times. So, you know, if that ends up being the map, maybe I swing the odds in LAG's favor. Either way, I'm not going to watch this game. The odds are about right, in my opinion. So I'm just going to stay away and see who definitively is the worst team in the CDL. I'll just take 15 points and a hard point from... I, sure. I don't th I don't think any of these teams should be beating anybody by, like, 15 points. So I'll take 15 points. Sure, why not? I'll probably feel horrible as, like, London wins by 30, but you know what? Who cares? It doesn't matter. That's... I'm not touching anything. I'm not touching money lines... Maybe again, like and again, this is this is a time when like if you think maybe L there's an edge on like London, like if you think London's a better hardpoint team and you think they can or like and again this is just an example here, but if say if it's like London or Florida or any of those other teams swapped in here, if you think one of them is definitively better than another team and say hardpoint or something, and you're like oh you know what if London's that much better in hardpoint then guess what they could that minus one and a, that minus one and a half is actually decent that you know what. Don't put anything on the money line. Just sprinkle a little bit on that. Don't put it on the money line because if it goes to game five, then you're like, oh, shoot, I'm screwed, right? So just sprinkle a little here, a little there. Again, small, find your pieces. Put 15 and a half in a hard point, a, hard, a spread here, a spread there. That's how you want to approach these. Speaking of Florida, Florida versus Boston in the second game on Friday. Florida plus one and a half, minus 110. Boston minus, minus one and a half, minus 120. Florida plus 210 on the money line. Boston minus 280. Five. Um, yeah. I I do really like Boston here, but for some reason I only have a minus one and a half as a minus one oh eight. I'm not sure why. I don't my model doesn't particularly love the minus one and a half. Um I do I do have um Yeah, it's it's a bit weird. I only have Boston as like a thirteen point favorite in the hard point. I do have them as pretty sizable favorites in the search and destroy. Um, I got them up winning that six four, so maybe a spread bet there. But it's just like it just doesn't seem like a ton of value in the minus one and a half. What are your What are your thoughts on this one? I I, I like I weirdly like, and and this is the problem when when you have a probabilistic betting model like this, right? It's like, yeah, sure, Boston's gonna win this, and they're probably gonna win this three one or maybe three zero. But like, I don't know if I really love them to win it by like. Like three one, right? Like I'm not sure if there's that much value on the minus two and a half, minus one and a half, right? Like how yeah, how do it, how do you approach that? It all comes down to value at the end of the day with this. Um, I yeah, to me, Boston minus one and a half is really the only playable thing here. Um, and even my model says there's not value in that. I would I would maybe just make the point that Boston, we've seen one match with this new lineup. Um, and it was against Minnesota Rocker at their home series in St. Paul, and they came out and beat them 3-1, and it very well could have been a 3-0 had they won uh, a round 11 in game two. So the hard point maps were convincing, the control map was solid. Like It just showed that Boston, despite only being 10 points ahead of Minnesota in the standings, they are clearly a tier above them, and it goes back to my point last week of... Whoever gets the one seed at champs, that actually is a nice advantage because you're either playing Minnesota or Vegas, and very likely it's Minnesota. And to me, the difference between 
Minnesota and Boston or Minnesota and Seattle, whoever is the seven seed, is a pretty big gap. Like, it's not the same gap as, like, Minnesota to London or something like that, but it's still a nice gap. It's a nice advantage to have. So that was my argument for, you know, taking phase to win champs is they have a nice lead on the one seed, although it did shrink a little bit last week. Um, but if they can hold on to that spot, a very, very easy game in round one for them. So anyway, back to this game. Yeah, Boston, minus one and a half, minus 120, a far superior hard point team. Search and destroy, about even, I would say. And then control, again, I have them as pretty substantial favorites in that mode. So yeah, to me, a 3-1 is most likely, but a sweep is very much in the cards if Boston come out and look okay in search. And, you know, a round 11 loss in your first match as that lineup with uh, Vivid and Kremp as the SMG duo, like, yeah, maybe it takes some time to fix search with a new lineup like that, but I think they'll be just fine. I think they'll take care of business here. Um, it is a bit of a... Things get interesting if Boston does slip up here, though, I will say. Um, like I said before, they're only 10 points ahead of Minnesota, and their schedule after this match is Seattle on Sunday, and then next week is Atlanta, New York. So if they were to lose this somehow, like, yeah, they might end the, the stage with two wins, and maybe that puts them in loser's bracket. If somehow Minnesota makes it into winner's bracket, like, could they flip spots? But even still you think Boston will qualify for champs in the long run. But I don't know. This game could make things interesting at least. But um, yeah, I think the game on Friday that I'm most interested in watching just for that like champs hypothetical situation is this one. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I Not a strong lean, but I really could only advocate for Boston in this spot here. Yeah, I... Uh... I tend to agree with that. I think you got to go Boston, but like maybe don't don't go nuts on the on the Boston minus one and a half. I'd say I think right. probably the uh, best option, but like don't start laying it a ton on that. Find find your pieces. Last match of Friday. This is a, this one actually could have the potential to do something here. Phase versus Legion. Phase minus one and a half minus one seventy. Legion plus one and a half plus one thirty. Phase minus four ten on the money line. Legion plus two seventy five. Over three and a half minus two twenty. Under three and a half plus one sixty five. So Legion is like secretly playing their way into being somewhat competitive here. It's actually kind of surprising. I actually my model has the plus um basically phase is only a sixty percent favorite. Definitely not a four, minus four ten. And I've got the plus one and a half at minus 172. So definitely some value there on the plus one and a half is plus 130. But that being said, at the same time, like, weirdly enough, I have phase winning game one by about uh, 34 points. I have phase winning game two, uh, six, four. And then weirdly enough, I have Legion winning the control. Now, I think it's because they've been kind of farming Expo control there for a bit. And they've actually been not bad at some other... They've been had a couple of good games of control recently. I think they beat Optic and Control. I think that might be why they're kind of high on them. But then I have game four is tied. So, like, I, I worry that this is going to be something really dumb where it's like, oh, okay, well, uh, they're, all the, the all the, the lights say, okay, go go bet on Legion here, and then you look stupid as they get swept 3-0. But, like, this is one where I'm like, I'm not going to put a ton on this. I'm just sprinkling a little bit. Legion plus one and a half. Legion money line a little bit. Not a lot. Just a little, little taste. That's all you need, little taste. And then just being like, cool, whatever happens, happens. I'm good either way. I think this could be cool. I think we could win this. But like, you know what? If we don't, whatever. I'm I'm okay. I'm not uh not losing my house over this. Or just like just a little there, be like, cool. Let's this is what the line this is what the numbers say. If it works, cool. If it doesn't, whatever. No uh no harm, no foul. That's that's my thoughts on this one. Yeah. Um, an interesting week for both of these teams, I would say. Uh more so for Vegas, I guess, than Atlanta, but just going to Atlanta, like Last week, they played LAG and Optic. Uh, they swept LAG in a game where we thought, like, LAG might make some noise and maybe could take a map. You know, maybe the map set would be a little unfavorable for FaZe, so LAG could pick up. 
a control or maybe sneak out a hard point against a, a hard point team that isn't great. And it was just, nope, FaZe showed up and dominated. Um, so good to see, I guess, if you're a FaZe fan that, oh, you can absolutely obliterate one of the worst teams in the league. So it, they looked like what they needed to look like in that match. And then two days later, they play Optic and they get swept. Um, yeah, still way behind in hard point, um, getting blown out on Fortress there. And I, I mean, it's it's to a point now where Optic are just winning so many hard points so convincingly that it's like, I don't know what you veto against them. And it's like, you're just going to have to run into them on a map that they dominate. And you got to hope that you can just, you know, force a map for or whatever your hard point pick is. Just hope that you can scrape by um, and go from there. But yeah, FaZe also did lose around 11 search on Embassy and then lost 3-0 on Control. Um, and that was at Expo. So not great in the respawns, which has been their weak point this year. Search that round eleven could flip the other way, but um, even still, just a weird week for them getting swept and having a sweep. And then Vegas, yeah, it's such a weird week for them, right? They come out against Optic on the first day and get it to a game five round eleven and lose. Um, but the most surprising thing, right, is they took out Optic on a game one hard point, very close, but still for a team that is below average in hard point to beat possibly the best hardpoint team in the game right now by any margin is impressive. Um, then you think, okay, Vegas are one of the best search teams in the game. Optic are still good as well, but could Vegas go up 2-0 in this series? No, Texas take the game too, and you're like, okay, Texas should have it from here because Vegas is horrible at control, and then, oh, Vegas beat Optic in control, and just nothing makes sense. And then Optic obviously take the hard point on Hotel pretty convincingly, and then sneak out uh, a Search and Destroy win in, in Map 5. And after that series, I was saying, like, all right, yeah, Vegas, despite the loss, and it was a gut-wrenching loss for them because they need every win they can get at this point. Like, you look at that match and you go, like, all right, Vegas are at least here and ready to play. Like, they are still going to make a push for champs, even with the difficult schedule, they have Minnesota on the schedule. They can take over points from them there. Maybe they can make winner's bracket. But just weird to see them lose both hard point or lose both search and destroys, win a control. It was just that series was so backwards to me. Um and then the next day, yeah, it kind of proved my point. Vegas come out and it's a long series again, but they win a hard point convincingly against New York, a good hard point team. They lose another round 11 search. Then they come out in 3-0 New York on Expo. And we're like, what is going on? They're winning controls all of a sudden. Get blown out in a hard point game four. And then come back and finally win a search and destroy on the weekend. So just weird. They end up 1-1, one and one, uh, a 5-5 five and five map count overall against quality opponents. So overall... A good weekend, I would say, for Vegas. Uh, I I don't know what to think of Atlanta's weekend. I guess a little underwhelming. You'd like them to take care of Optic there. But in this specific match, it is really interesting, and I totally get why you're backing Vegas. To me, it's a stay away, but I like your thought of, like, listen, Vegas, last week they came out and showed that they are here to play. Atlanta came out and just kind of look like the same phase of the last month or two where it's it's good against really bad teams and it's a little shaky against some of the top teams so where does vegas fall in that we'll find out but um but yeah if you want to take vegas plus a map and a half i think that does make sense considering that phase are vulnerable in hard point uh considering that vegas are on back-to-back -back control wins i'm not saying they're going to beat phase in that mode but like it's good that they're showing improvement um, and then if there is a team to take out FaZe in a search, it would be Vegas Legion. So we'll see if that all shakes out to a Legion victory. But um, yeah, one I'm going to stay away from, but I will watch this and be semi-intrigued with whatever the result is. Absolutely. Yeah, that's um, that's fair. I, again, the math says, but well, I'm not like usually I'll 
bet a hard point spread, like, but even then, like, Legion plus 26 and a half, no, that's way too short. I can't, I can't justify that. Um, right. But, like, this is the thing, right? It's like, just the numbers say Legion should cover a one and a half. They could even have a chance to win if it's, if it's a game five search and destroy, they may even have a shot to win this thing. So just small bet on plus one and a half money line and if we lose whatever it's all good if we win we get ice cream that's it that's 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 how it works moving on to saturday london versus phase and again we are now in the oh god these are games part of the of the of the weekend now london plus two and a half minus 125 again what are we supposed to do with this like you're basically saying a sweep is 50 50 at this point phase minus two and a half minus 105 Ravens plus seven hundred the money line phase minus sixteen hundred the money line over three and a half minus one twenty again and like this is the problem right but I only I only price the win at minus four hundred instead of the minus sixteen hundred and I price the minus two and a two and a half at plus two sixty two but like do I really want to bet Ravens to win a map at minus one twenty five no that sounds bad right. But then do I I don't want to bet phase minus two and a half because my model says that sounds like a horrible bet. So like I don't even know what to do with this one either. And again, like hard point spread plus thirty six and a half. I mean, maybe. Maybe London could cover that. They could. Do I wanna see them try? No. <laughs> right? Like this is the thing. It's like, sure, they could do that. Do I want to see them try? No. Like, I don't want to root for that, like, but this is, um, this is what, this is what this is now, right? It's like, well, this is, you're either with, um, like, and I, I, I kind of refuse. I think my solution to this is just, I'm just not touching this game. I think the, basically, I mean, you, you could, I'll, I'll hear what you have to say on this too, but I think the solution here is you just don't, you just don't play this game. You just say, whatever, I'm not betting on this game. Have fun. It's Saturday afternoon. I'm gonna go. I don't know. Maybe there's baseball on or something. I don't know. Just not. Yeah. I'm not so, betting on this. Yeah, this game is brutal. Obviously, um, I've got Atlanta as a, a much higher favorite than you do. I've got them ninety three percent chance to win, um, which is pretty much minus sixteen hundred on the dot. Uh, so yeah, not a lot of value here. Obviously, like. I'm not going to take a minus 1600. The sweep, yeah, the odds to sweep are not quite there either. I've got Atlanta um, sweeping about 46% of the time. So the minus 105 is a little too high for me. Uh, I will want to, or I will say, if you just want to get crazy and take the underdog because it's rare that we get underdogs this big in the league, like, why not just take London to win in exactly four maps? Like, if they're going to do it, that's going to be how, because their search is just a nightmare. And I, it gets overlooked just because they're a bad team. Like, their search is atrocious. Phase's search, still elite. Uh, so I would just about guarantee that Phase wins a search and destroy on basically any map as London. Hard point, right? Phase is vulnerable there. They're still a better team than London, but it's not crazy to think London win both hard points, especially if Phase, right, are willing to play on some of their weaker maps, and we'll see if they even decide to do that. At this point, if you're Phase, I would just play teams straight up on whatever your optimal map pool is because, to me, again, the one seed matters a decent amount this year, even though there's no buy or anything for the team that gets it you're still going to play a softer opponent. So if I were FaZe, I wouldn't mess around, but we'll see if they do just to get reps on a, a map they're not used to or something like that. So yeah, to me, the path for London is probably you somehow take both hard points and you take a control that like, right, FaZe on the year in control is 19 and 19, which is perfectly average. London... 4 and 19, obviously much, much worse. But if we were to play on Expo Control, which is possible, right? If it's a new map, FaZe might want more reps on it, especially because FaZe has not won on Expo Control. They are 0 and 3, 
which is the exact same record that London Royal Ravens have. So it's it takes a lot, right? It's a very it's a really, really long shot. And I'm actually curious to see what London to win in exactly for its 18 to 1 odds. So, you know. If you want to get crazy, that would be my suggestion and see if London can win by going hard point, control hard point. Um, Because, yeah, I just, I think they have no shot in search. So, in all honesty, it's probably a phase 3-0. It probably looks like what we saw last week in the match versus LAG. But if chaos ensues for whatever reason, London in four, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, I mean that's that's fair. I um It's not happening, but like if it does, I want all the credit for it. That's all. I mean to be fair, that does make sense, right? Like if if London is going to win this, they won't be able to win the map 5 search and destroy, right? So they'd have to so basically you have to pick the minus one and a half. So you could just juice the plus 700 instead to probably like a uh plus 1100. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess. I like how they're also not going to offer you fates plus two and a half. They're like, no. They're like, yeah, they're like, we're not, we're not going to let you dump ten thousand dollars into your account just to win a penny on phase because, yeah, that would be what those odds would be. So, yeah, the phase plus two and a half at like, cause like the plus phase plus one and a half even is still a bit iffy at minus twenty eight hundred. You just like chalky parlay with that, like some other esports stuff. All right, moving on. Uh, yeah, we're still on Saturday, right? Yeah, okay, Saturday yeah. afternoon. Thieves versus Florida. Thieves, again, this is, wow, fun games here. Thieves, minus one and a half, minus 210. What are you supposed to do with this? Florida, plus one and a half, plus 160, minus 600. Uh, Mutineers, plus 350, over three and a half, minus 205, under three and a half, plus 155. Like, I've got minus one and a half is minus 138. I've got I've got Thieves at a 71% chance, 72% chance, 71.8, 72% chance to win this, which is not minus 600, so I'm a bit low on them. But, like, could they win this in four? Yeah. I That being said, I have a, I have a Thieves future to win over two and a half games, which is now very much jeopardy after they lost the first two games. So I might just uh I might just be sitting here waiting for a thieves win. So I might just I might just uh keep it as that. Um but like th- this is almost unbettable. Like actually no sorry, the way you bet this is you bet thieves minus thirty eight and a half in the hard point. That's how you bet this. Um But like some of these some of these lines are like just unbettable. Like what are you supposed to do with a minus two ten for minus one and a half? Like you can't these teams need to be competitive to, to have a shot here, and a lot of these teams just aren't competitive. What are, what are your thoughts on this game? Yeah, I, I'm seeing this one a lot like you as well. I have Thieves at an 80% chance to win. Um, the minus 600 means that is too high. Uh, phase, or excuse me, Thieves to cover a map and a half 66% of the time, which is a little too high for a minus 210 bet. So, yeah, there's... There's nothing here for me. Um, I will say, I still think your Thieves to go over bet is very much alive. They have Mutineers, Rocker, and then Royal Ravens to close it out. So which very is, likely they get all three of those. Which, but... to be fair, that was why I made the to, like that was that was factored into the bet too, right? Like it wasn't like oh well, like no, no like it was designed for like well, okay, yeah. maybe they can lose two of them, but then the back three, like come on guys, you know what you're doing here, and yeah, that was but so, yeah. yeah, the hope for them, right? Yeah, you start with Toronto and New York. Hopefully, you get one of those. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, and that's why they were maybe the biggest loser of week one. But in the grand scheme of things, they're fine. They have tons of points, even if they lose the rest of their qualifiers and get top 12 at major five, like they're still a good team. I mean, I would be shocked if they did that, but um, they very well could do that and be perfectly fine for champs. They'd probably slide down a couple spots in the seating, but they should bounce back here. I think it's a three, one most likely. Um, But yeah, minus two ten, just a little too rich for my blood. Um, Alternately, Thieves are a team that like to go really, really hot sometimes. So if you're interested in making any sort of wager, 
maybe you get a little crazy again and go thieves just to sweep at whatever those odds are because that could very well happen in a match like this with just two opponents that are drastically different in terms of skill level. So that's really all I can do. I would advocate for Thieves. Just steer clear from Florida. Um, I know they won last week, but their their game was against LAG, and they barely squeaked that one out anyway. So for me, it's Thieves or nothing, but I'll just pass altogether. Yeah, that's that's fair to me. Um, I think I'm just going to sit here, maybe map one, but outside I'm just going to wait for my, this is just future bet at this point now. Seattle versus Optic for the second last game on Saturday. Surge plus one and a half minus 105. Optic minus one and a half minus 125. Surge plus 225 on the money line. Optic minus 325. Over four and a half plus 185. Under four and a half plus 250. Finally, a game I like. I actually have a massive value on the minus one and a half. I have the I have optic as an eighty two percent chance to win this game. I've got the minus one and a half as minus two thirty nine. I think specifically because I have optic absolutely destroying Seattle in search in in hard point and in search and destroy, but lesser extent hard like to more extent hard point because the Seattle team is not particularly good. And I think the the sports books only realize that every once in a while. Um. But yeah, I, I really like Optic in this game. I think the 325 is a bit too high for the money line, but I think the minus one and a half is very attractive. I think we're getting a discount because Optic almost lost to to Legion, but I think that discount will be gone very soon. And I think that if we... Uh, basically, I think this is our shot here. And I think, uh, I think Legion was a team that needed that win to... They needed to get back to be competitive again, and I think that now that they got that shot, I think I think they gave Optic a scare, but I think that was more a sign of Legion having life rather than Optic not being good. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I don't know. This one interests me a little bit. I think of all the matches we've talked about so far, it is the most compelling because we have two teams that are actually probably both going to be at champs. Um, so that's exciting. But uh, yeah, I've got the odds a little different. Obviously, uh, I've got Texas a little lower than you do. Um, but at this point in the year, like, it's just too scary to bet against them. Like, the way they take care of some teams is just, it's shocking to me. However, their match against Vegas last week was a little concerning considering they did slip up in hard point against a team that is not very good in hard point. They also lost the control to a team that is not very good at control, but still bounced back in the search and destroys very well. They did take care of the map four. I don't know. Seattle's weird to me, right? Just because they're very respawn reliant. And I do think they can keep it close with optic. So I don't know. I, I might avoid the Seattle to cover a map and a half even though my model does see some value in that. And I'd rather pivot to, like, Seattle maybe just keeping it close in hard point. But it, it wouldn't shock me at all if Seattle somehow pull this out or at least force it to a game five. Um, you look at the maps that they're both very good on in hard point, and they line up. So if Seattle are hot that day, maybe they take it. But otherwise, yeah, it feels like an optic victory. Yeah. Last game on on Saturday, and this is uh, another classic here. Subliners versus Gorillas. Subliners, minus 2.5, plus 120. Again, like, a sweep is like, a, what, 45% chance? LAG, plus 2.5, minus 155. Subliners, minus 1,200 on the money line. LAG, plus 575, over 3.5, minus 145. Under 3.5, plus 110. And it's just what are we saying? Like yeah, pass. Yeah, I've got the yeah. I've got the minus two and a half as plus one ninety seven. But like it could happen. Like could LEG decide to give up that day? Yeah, they could. Do we have any way to know if they're not if they're going to or not? No. Like look at the look at the hard point spread here. It's like I think on what was it on bet so on on Bodog it's minus forty four and a half. On bet three six five it's subliners minus fifty and a half. I think that's the highest hard point spread I've ever seen. They usually don't like going more than 50, to be honest with you. They don't like usually having a spread higher than 50. 
So, like, I, I don't think I've ever seen a 50 and a half hard point spread. But they're at yeah. 50, that's how bad this is. They're like they're they're basically saying there is like no chance that this LAG team can beat this uh, subliners team at hard point. I'm like I kind of agree. I mean I actually have it as a hundred point. I have it as two fifty to one fifty nine. So I basically have them ninety points better on a, on a hard point game. So, um, God, could you imagine if the model like eventually has someone like you know, they're gonna hundred point club them? Because <laughs> the model like yeah, projects a hundred point I... club. It'd be like yeah they're they're gonna lose two fifty to like eighty nine. <laughs> That's the thing, though. We've seen a fair number of those this year, so yeah, it really wouldn't have. be shocking to me, but it, yeah, it would be something else to see in a model, at least. But, yeah, this is just the definition of a game where it's like, how does New York not win in a sweep? Like, they're so much better at everything. Like, hard point, I have them as 77% favorites. Search and Destroy, a little less, 62% favorites, but still comfortable and then control i have new york as an 81 percent favorite you add up all the prices right you just multiply those percentages together that's the odds for a sweep i've got that at 39 percent and that doesn't even come close to plus 120 that's a six percent disadvantage so yeah it's a stay away and actually that 39 percent might be a little too high considering that new york didn't win a round of control last weekend. They were 0-6, and, and three of those rounds were to Vegas Legion. Um, and yeah, like their search and destroy looks suspect at times. Last week it looked all right, but this week it could be the opposite, and LAG could sneak out a win there as well. So uh, yeah, again, pass for me, but it's just it's these kind of matches that I think a lot of people get trapped into going like, oh, there's this very good team against one of the worst teams and it's plus 120 for that great team to win three maps in a row like sure but just be wary um yeah the odds just aren't quite there for this new york team however we said something similar in an lag game last week against phase and look what that was so yeah anyway probably a new york victory you know, I just, I can't get there with plus 120, so I gotta pass. The The thing of it is, it's kind of funny, because we we were, like, how many times did we have games where we'd lay, like, alternative minus one and a halfs, or alternative minus two and a halfs on something, and, like, we'd get, like, minus two and a half in, like, a random game at, like, plus 500 or something, or, like, an alternative minus one and a half at, like, plus 300, and, like, those would hit, and I think I think I'll, I think the books took notice, and they're just like, okay, screw that now, we're done. We're just gonna like just on these games, we're not gonna let you get decent value on the minus two and a half. But like, I feel like it's like specifically these games, like for example, and we'll, we'll hit a, a relatively competitive game very soon. Now, actually, no, let's pick a let's pick a competitive game. So, surge versus optic, optic minus two and a half plus two fifty, right? That's like. As I, I've got that at plus plus two sixty nine, so it's actually about the right price, right? But like a couple a bit ago, that was like you get that at like three hundred, like plus three hundred plus four hundred, right? But I feel like they've crimped those in because what happens is they've realized that people are taking advantage of that, right? So I think they've realized that. Um, I think they've realized that people have been picking them apart on those like alt alt spreads and I think they're realizing they've lost money on them so they're just like they're reducing the odds of them because I think this game is very like this game is probably like I think the, the Vanguard was very random and I think they kind of knew that and and, and uh, Doug Leiby uh, our friend on on Twitter we talk I talked to him sometimes and he, he does some great work shout out to him he I think he was the one who did the modeling on it where basically it was like because um, a lot of Vanguard games went to game five and I think he showed that the more likely a game is to go the distance to a game five, the more random it is. Because what will happen is if, if a game is truly skillful and Team A has a much better chance to win each game than Team B, then like it shouldn't go to game set five that often. There should be a lot more game fours and a lot more sweeps. But if it is completely random, then it'll go to like a game five most. Not, not no, most of the time, but a higher percentage of the time. So I think what we're seeing is we're definitely seeing a real skill gap in this game. 
and I think absolutely, and I yeah. think the, the the I think the books were still kind of pricing in that well, sweeps are rare, but like we've actually seen quite a few sweeps this year, to be honest. And I think the books are trying to price that in. I think that's that's where this gets a little interesting. So uh, we'll we'll have to see. I, I'm actually interested to see how this will uh, how this will look and 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 go from there. But yeah, I think it's yeah, this is unplayable. I mean, maybe if you really want something, map two, um, subliners minus one and a half, minus one fifteen. There you go. There's your there's your one lean toss up model sponsored play on this game, other than just laying a ridiculous minus hard point spread. Which to be fair it is L A G. But to be fair I also bet L A G plus fifteen and a half against a hard point against London. But to be fair that doesn't really matter. <laughs> That's just because I don't trust London either. But yeah, whatever. Subliners they just bounce around but to be something like this week we're gonna be a good team and next week we're gonna suck. So I don't know. Anyways moving on to Sunday, unless you have anything else you want to say about that game. No, we no. can. Okay, we can move on. All game. right, Sunday. Again, another barn burner here. <clears throat> actually, it well, is. Well, actually, important. it's not bad. It's not. It's it's an important game. It's not bad actually. I've actually changed my opinion on this game <clears throat> recently. Oh. I think okay. I thought basically a week ago I was gonna like rocker in this game. I think I've changed my mind. I think now you know which side I'm on. Legion minus one and a half plus one eighty five. Minnesota Rocker plus one and a half minus two fifty. Legion minus one forty five on the money line. Rocker plus one ten over four and a half plus one forty five. Under four and a half minus one ninety. After seeing Legion almost take down Optic and then Legion beating New York. New York. I've got Legion as a sixty percent chance to win this game, so there's ba- I'm basically on market. But what I actually really like in this game is the minus one and a half. So wow, okay. Here's the fascinating thing. My model has Legion priced at minus 145 to win, but it's got the minus one and a half priced at plus 107. Because my model is saying Legion's better at hardpoint than Rocker, right? So my model is basically saying, okay, Rocker might be weirdly better in S and D, but it's basically saying it's saying that Le- what Legion's going to do is they're going to basically they're going to either like one three four it or like one two four it or something. But the model is saying they're going to win it in four games. And they can still win it in five games. They're not favored to win it in five games, but like they're they're much better at hard points. So to they're basically the, the their third win, game win is going to come in game four. Is what the model is saying, or it's a very high chance. So like when you're looking at like a plus one hundred seven, I've got a price at, and I'm seeing it plus one eighty five. I'm taking that all day, hundred uh, percent. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, so I understand the Vegas love. Um... I kind of side with Minnesota here, just slightly. Um, I I will say, right, Vegas did look good in their respawn games last weekend for the most part, or at least looked better than what they usually show. Hard point, I've got these teams about 50-50, so I actually see if it goes game one and game four, I do think they'll end up splitting those. Um, search and destroy, big, big advantage for Vegas. That's their bread and butter. Minnesota, it is by far their worst game mode of everything. Um, and Vegas were a little shaky last week, right? Only one in three in Search and Destroys, but two of those were round 11 losses. Granted, their one win was a round 11 win, but those things should even out over time, and they've shown a good track record of success in Search throughout the year. So I give the hard points a split. I give a clear, clear advantage in Search to Vegas and a very clear advantage in control to Minnesota. And one thing of note, right, Vegas did win both controls last weekend. Pretty impressive. Minnesota was 1-1. One and one. Um, A lot of Vegas's success in control, at least recent su- success, has to do with the new map. So overall on the year, on the map pool that is currently in play, they're 8-19. and 19. This is Vegas Legion. 8-19. and 19. Uh, if you just look at Expo, they are 3-1. and one. So it's like, hey, that's actually a pretty good record. Minnesota, who have been consistently good in control throughout the year, on the current map pool, 17-8, and eight, a much better overall record. And if you just look at Expo, they are 4-1. and one. So a record that's just as good, if not better. So I worry Vegas might come crashing back down to earth here 
and end up losing a control. To me, it really feels like a Vegas 3-2 victory than a 3-1 victory, so that's why I'm shying away from the Vegas minus a map and a half. Um, if anything, I might look on the opposite side and go Rocker minus a map and a half, just thinking like, okay, split the hard points or maybe get both of them and the control. That, I think, is probably the easiest path to victory for them. Um, that I even don't love, so... Again, with a lot of these matches this week, it's mostly a stay away for me. But as a Rocker fan, I'm very much rooting for Rocker to take this win. If Vegas does win, it makes things obviously super, super interesting um, for the eight seed moving forward. But uh, yeah, to me, I think Minnesota can at least force that game five. And I don't know. I, I worry about the Vegas minus a map and a half here. But obviously it could come through if Vegas maintain... Um, some, some success in control specifically and yeah their hard point is on par with if not better than minnesota for sure i will say though that like again healthy sprinkling on the money line there too but at the same point in time plus 185 is definitely worth it for from a risk perspective right 100 percent, right so um i don't hate it they're hot they they got momentum on their side, and they're fighting their butts off to get that eight seed. So I don't mind it at all. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, second last game of the weekend here. Toronto with Toronto versus Optic. Toronto plus one and a half, minus 230. Optic minus one and a half, plus 175. Ultra on the money line, minus 105. Optic minus 125. Over four and a half, plus 150. Under four and a half, minus two hundred. So, I thought I, I before each before the 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 model is run, or well not well basically before the the first week of qualifiers, I run the model for every single game, and I distinctly remember this model this game having optic specifically favored. That's not the case anymore. I've got Toronto is slightly favored, ever so slightly, and I um. I don't know if it's enough to bet on it. I've got Toronto as a 50.9% favorite. So it's basically an even. I've, I, what happens is when it's that close, I have the model just say it's plus 100. And now Toronto's minus 105, so like that's okay. But Optic is minus 125, so whatever. Um, for some reason, they're going to give you points with Toronto in the, in the hard point. That seems wrong, so definitely take those points. Um, they're going to give you 10.5, so do that. Um, and then they're going to let you, uh, Toronto, have minus one and a half at plus 125, plus one fifth, mi minus one and a half in map three, plus one fifth, that's pretty good too. I would also wouldn't mind sprinkling a little bit at ultra minus one and a half. I've got that at plus 213, and you're getting plus 210 for that. That's actually not a bad price at all. Um, so yeah, I, I actually do like ultra, but I'm not sure if I like ultra on the money line. I actually prefer random other ultra pieces here. Um, what are your thoughts? Are you with me on Ultra on this, or do you think do you have Optic favorite in this game? Yeah, no, I've I'm on your side here. I will say my numbers just slightly higher on Toronto, which makes sense. I've got Toronto as a 55 percent favorite. Um, might be a couple percentage points too high for my taste, so maybe I'd I'd make Toronto like a 53 percent, 52 percent favorite um, over Optic here. And I I agree. I, I like the Toronto minus one and a half at plus 210. I think that makes some sense. Um, if there is a team that can compete with Texas in hard point, it is this Toronto Ultra team. They are so, so good at that. They are the best control team, in my opinion, as well. A game mode that Texas has just been mediocre in all year. And then Search and Destroy, I do give a slight edge to Optic, but not significant whatsoever. So... I do favor Toronto here ever so slightly. Um, and let's not forget, last time these two teams faced, it was the Major 3 final. Toronto did win that 4-2, so a convincing victory in a long series. Uh, Toronto took both hard points, which surprised a lot of people. Uh, that ended up breaking up Optic's crazy uh, hard point streak of however many games it was. Uh, Toronto took care of business in both of those hard point games. Uh, slipped up a little bit in search, which is part of the reason why I have Optic favored in that mode, but uh, took care of business in the control as well. So uh, yeah, I like Toronto here. I think if they do win, 
it is a 3-1, so that's part of the reason why I like the minus 1.5. And and it's a great payout. It's plus 210. I've got that happening about 38% of the time, which is about a 5% edge when you break down the numbers. So, um, yeah, I like Toronto. I don't love it, but uh, it's enough value for me to, to be interested, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I think um best game of the week for sure. Right? Oh, for sure. Not even a not even a question. I think it's the best game of the week. Last game of the week though. So this is sad it's coming right before the end of the week. Surge versus Boston. Surge minus one and a half my, plus one eighty. Boston plus one and a half minus two forty. Surge minus one oh five on the money line. Breach minus one twenty five. Over four and a half plus one fifty five. Under four and a half minus two oh five. I've got bosses a 57% chance to win this, so it's not a particular... It's like slight value on the money line, but not a ton of great value on the money line. I've got the minus 1.5 for Boston priced at 116, because I think they're better at, at hard point, and you're going to get that plus 210, so there's some value... There's some alt spread lines there. With some value there. My model's just really out on Seattle. I don't I don't know why. I just My model just really does not seem to like the surge, at least not this week. Maybe it it's not it's not we always hate them. It's not always a surge hater, but it just does not seem to like them this week. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think are you are you with me on surge maybe not being that great this week, or what do you think? Yeah, it it could really be an zero and three start for Seattle surge. It's not an easy schedule whatsoever. They obviously lost to Toronto last week. Um, they play Optic and Breach this week. Two, you know, not cupcake opponents. And then next week they end with New York and Vegas, who again are very solid opponents. So nothing easy on the schedule for Surge this stage. And yeah, by the time this match is over, we could be looking at an 0-3 start to them, which honestly isn't that uncommon. Um, I want to say Pred and Sib on online matches since they've joined the CDL are sub-500. And which is kind of shocking to hear about, but like it does make sense because when they get hot, they get hot and they win a major, or finish second, or something crazy like that. So, online, always I'm a little more suspect of Seattle Surge. I'm with you. I've got Boston as a 54% favorite, so not quite as high, but again, when you consider what Boston did last week with their new lineup going into Minnesota, beating Rocker convincingly in their first match with that four, it's, yeah, it's a solid win. Maybe that bumps up Boston at another couple percentage points, and maybe you look at that minus 125 and go, yeah, that's that's worth it. Um, I'd rather go money line with Boston than uh, against the spread, just because I do think Seattle is a hard point and a control team at their core. Like, when they lose, very frequently it's in a map five, um, and that's how I see this one going. I do think Boston probably take it 3-2. Um, probably take a hard point map and both searches or the control map and both searches. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I, I like Boston here. Um, not super convincingly, but again, that's the side I lean with. So uh, this could end up being a really, really impactful match if Boston comes out and, you know, falls flat on their face and loses to Florida in their first match. Not saying that's going to happen, but it is a possibility. Uh, And if Seattle do the expected thing and fall short against Optic, you've got two teams now who, you know, the loser of that game, should those results hold, uh, very, very likely to start in loser's bracket. And when you look at the points table for these two teams, sixth for Seattle Surge, seventh for Boston, they're separated by 10 points. So, we could see some shuffling in the points table uh, after this weekend with those two teams playing. But um, yeah, I like Boston's outlook just a little more. So I think, yeah, it's a real possibility Boston does jump them this weekend and uh, takes the sixth seed for now. We'll see if that holds uh, in the long term. But yeah, I like Breach here. I think they impressed last week, and I just think they're a more well-rounded team than Seattle. Yeah, I, I I have to agree. I I just 
at this point, I'm not seeing it with Seattle. And the, and the problem with Seattle at this point is you are major five week two. So say you go to this week. Good. Well, not good. Not great. Bad. But then do you make a change before the last week no. of the major? Do you make a change no. at the major? Do you make a change before champs? Like, it's the problem. No you're, one's you're making like, a change. No, no to even the worst teams. Like, at this point in the year, you've got the roster you've got. So if Seattle go 0-3 by the end of this week and maybe even finish 1-4 or 0-5 on the stage, like, they're just going to roll into Major 5, do what they can, get prep for champs, because uh, they've actually come out and said, like, no, this is our roster. You know, Pred and Sib have come out and said, like, no, accuracy helps the team a ton. We need them on the team. Mac does his thing. Like, they like each other. They're definitely sticking together, even though so many times we've called for them to make a roster move. I just, I can't see it happening, Robert. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I don't. Uh, I I don't think so. Uh, and that means you know probably a top six finish at champs and a overall average year for them. And that's if that's what they were shooting for. Congratulations to them. But um, if that's the case, I think it's just proof that yeah, maybe maybe they should have made a roster move like we said months ago. But whatever. Some teams just stay stuck in their ways. <laughs> rocker sorry <laughs> <laughs> well i think that just about does it for this week's games so this is um there are definitely some games this week there's definitely 10 games 10 cdl games are happening this weekend oh yeah uh, definitely at least 10 um are we gonna watch all 10 no. definitely not am but i gonna, am I gonna, some... am I gonna bet on all 10 also no um <laughs> right which is, I mean, usually I put something on something, but like sometimes it's just like, no, I can't. Like, I can't. Some of these, just numbers, you just can't justify it. You're like, no, there's no value here. It's just like, these teams yeah. are so bad and unpredictable, you just, you can't. Like, you just, you you can't do anything with some of these. So, yeah, I, uh, we're near the end. There is only another, um, only another couple weeks of this uh, left. And yeah. yeah, this this week and next week, and that's it for the end of the regular season. Then we're at major four, major five, and then uh, champs. And then we'll yeah. maybe hopefully find out what the game next year is going to be. Still don't even know what that is yet. Um, yeah, that's still a long ways away, but um, it'll get here quicker than we think. Well, this is the question now because it's like normally this is happening in August. Now this is going to be happening in June. Like it's going to be two whole months behind where it normally is. Yeah. So, like, this is the thing. People said they wanted the season moved up. They didn't say move the season up and then don't add more things to the end of the season. They wanted the season moved up because it was so much time between the end of the last season and the beginning of this season. They're like, oh, there's like six months without a COD. Well, now there's still going to be six more than six months without a COD. Yeah, so, I imagine they'll have, like, the all-star event that they usually do halfway through the year, probably post-champs. Um, and maybe do some war zone stuff in there or some tournament, like some side tournaments. I don't know. They'll, they'll find a way to fill some of the time, but you're right. It, it will feel like a very long off season, especially if this next game doesn't come out until like November or maybe late October. Like either way, it's going to feel like eons before we actually get there. Yeah. And if it's sledgehammer and we're waiting, hoping on a competitive level game, yeah. Vanguard 2, come on, let's go. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, please, well, please don't. <laughs> Van Sledgehammer, uh, Call of Duty World War 2 2, what happened after World War 2? Uh, no, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I they're probably, I'd hope they're just going to hand, we'll see, I hope they're just going to ha literally hand over the game and be like, just add on DLC to this game and we're going to sell it for $70 somehow. I hope that's what they're going to do and nothing crazy like, oh, let's like... um. Get rid of trophy systems. Yeah. No. Not have Semtex grenades. Like, no. Like, leave the good stuff in, please. Be like, oh, you know, everybody was complaining that, like, Predator missiles were being taken up by trophy systems, so we got rid of the trophy systems. Everybody should be happy now. Yeah. <laughs> Problem fixed. If that's fixed. their justification, then Pro honestly, kudos to them, because they're kind of right. But Problem fixed. See, I, there was a problem there. <laughs> they fixed the problem now. So yeah. we, we will see as we get closer to it. But that's it for now for us for this week. We'll see you guys next week for the last week of the regular season.
See you, everybody.